With today's reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, we come to the end of the letter. The passage we just heard contains a final exhortation and a word of encouragement. Be strong, Paul says. Stand firm in the face of difficulties. Be resolute in regard to your commitments. All this is possible, he adds, because of the strength of the power of Christ that is at work within us. Here is elsewhere, Paul refers to life, including the life of faith, as involving struggle. When we are young, we struggle to learn and develop our talents and abilities, to mature and find our path forward into life. Later, we struggle to cope with the demands of work and family, of financial needs and health. As real and as inevitable as these and other struggles are, the struggles on which Paul focuses are of a different nature. They are against what he calls cosmic powers and forces of evil. Although it is not clear what precisely he has in mind, the things he is thinking of are clearly larger than we are as individuals. They may be spiritual beings like fallen angels or the power of sin that has entered into and become part of the structures of the world. We experience such things when we find ourselves drawn against our own better judgment to what we know are self-destructive attitudes, attitudes like greed and anger, lust and envy. Sometimes the struggle is about faith itself, on the one hand, negative experiences, whether our own or others, can make us doubt the existence of a merciful and loving God. On the other hand, the good things of the world and our enjoyment of them can narrow our horizon, lower our range of vision until they are all that we are able to see. It should not surprise us that the life of faith like our moral and psychological life, entails an element of struggle. In encouraging us to prepare for that struggle, Paul appeals to the image of a Roman soldier and the armor that he would wear when going into battle. And so he says that we should fasten the belt of truth about our waist, put on the breastplate of righteousness, take up the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, and place on our head the helmet of salvation. The point Paul is making is a simple one. Christian life provides us with various resources to fight against all that might undermine us in our efforts to lead a good and decent life, a life worthy of a follower of Jesus. Faith itself does this by giving us a glimpse of the truth about God and human life listening to what faith teaches and allowing its teaching to influence our choices and attitudes enhances enormously our chances to be able to keep our balance in the midst of the conflicting voices that draw us now this way and now that. In saying that the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, Paul highlights something that is central to Christianity something that has been reaffirmed again at the recent Synod of Bishops in Rome. The Word of God, in the sense both of the incarnate Christ and of the Scriptures, is the foundation and abiding center of Christian spiritual life. It is a source of inspiration and nourishment. The Word, however, only really becomes effective in us when it is accompanied by the presence of the Spirit. It is the Spirit who strengthens and renews us from within and who draws us into relationship with Christ. 
the combination of God's Word illuminating our minds and the Spirit inflaming our hearts brings about that inner transformation, that renewal of our spiritual identity that enables us to stand firm in the face of the challenges and temptations, the struggles and difficulties that are an inevitable part of every life. Paul ends his letter by encouraging us to pray, to pray for ourselves and one another, and to do so with perseverance. Our prayer, he says, should be made in the Spirit. What that entails is suggested by a famous passage in his letter to the Romans. There he affirms that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Not knowing how to pray, the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. There's something profoundly consoling about such an idea. Even when we find ourselves unable to pray, or when we think that prayer has no point, we should not give up. It is precisely at times like these that the Spirit of God takes over as it were for us. What to us seems like our groaning and sighing is in fact the impulse of the Spirit lifting our prayer to God. Along with the many positive and good things that life entails, it also has, Paul reminds us, its share of difficulties and struggles, struggles with ourselves and others, struggles with the social, economic, and other structures within which we live, struggles too with spiritual forces of evil. Through faith and baptism, we have become members of Christ, enabled through the gift of the Spirit to share his life, made strong, with his strength. Faith provides light in our darkness, hope, firmness in the face of confusion and upheaval, love and inner strength and rootedness that is able to survive in the face of every challenge. All three anchor us in God. We will stand firm for as long as we stand in him. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs for all of us that our sharing in this Eucharist will strengthen us for the inevitable struggles of our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For Christians in parts of India who for the last several months have been the objects of violence and terror, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the poor and the unemployed that those who can will help them in their need, let us pray to the Lord. For the elderly and the chronically ill and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends and for all those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. 